So now we are going to go into details of row model. Uh, first, we we'll tell the setup, and then we we'll tell the declarations. So uh, the setup is rather simple. So the uh, row model assume uh, the efficient price, which is unobserved, for the random walk assumption. So the efficient price is mt, which is efficient price at time t, is equal to the efficient price uh, last period, mt minus 1, plus a, a random term. Uh, this random term is uh, iid random variable with a zero mean and a constant variance sigma square sub u. So uh, this model is different from ICTIS, so that's why uh, it assumes uh, it is a dealer market, uh, so basically all trades are uh, conduct for dealers, and uh, this has been true in the uh, U.S. stock market before '90. So every stock there will be one or several specialists, so everyone will buy and sell with uh, the dealers. Okay, and the dealer will tell you every point of time uh, what is the buying price and selling price and in the other word the dealer set a bit us spread so uh, in order to execute this uh, actually the dealer incurs uh, cost c per trade and this c will be the thing that we define uh, we want to figure out what is the c and uh, because this cost c is uh, something that the dealer have to incur this per unit per each transaction so he has to set the selling price and buying price to not be the same uh, later you will see if it's set the same then he will make losses per trade so he has to set some difference between these two numbers two different prices to make sure that uh, he's not losing so uh, we assume that uh, the dealers are behaving competitively because uh, you can imagine that uh, dealers, uh, there are multiple dealers and financial goods are exactly the same. So you buy from one dealer, it's not different buy from the other, right? You buy or sell from one special dealer, it's still the same stock. So it fit the ideal case of Bertrand competition, their competing price. No one's able to set the price different uh, from the others. If they set different from others, the other one can undercut, right? Suppose uh, someone is set setting the price at somewhat higher than the others, then uh, pe all the consumers will go to the one who is uh, cheaper, right? Um, so that means that uh, no one can deviate from the uh, trading cost. So basically, you you observe the bid price will be, uh, the price that below the uh, efficient price, and ask price will be the efficient price plus the trade cost. Why? Because when you trying to buy, right? You buy at the ask price, so the value of the stock is worth efficient price. So, uh. The price that the dealer can sell you is a top up from C. If you top up more than C, then uh, then the other dealer can undercut slightly lower than you can still make some profit. So, at the competition, will tell you that I mean, uh, the buying price will be exactly equal to the efficient price plus C, and similarly the selling price, uh. B will be the price uh, that you can only sell at the price that uh, exactly C lower than the efficient one. Suppose uh, someone is uh, uh, trying to set the price much below, somewhat slightly below it, then uh, other dealer can say, I, I can allow you to sell it a little bit higher. So when competition occur, then you will Make sure that uh, there's no no much no profit margin there. So that's why uh, no one can make profit at these two prices. And because of this, the bid spread is defined at a minus b, 
will be equal to 2c. So now we look at the transition price, which is the data we have. So transition price at time t uh, is denoted f p of t. And when we have buy, the price t will be equal to a t. And when we sell, the price is equal to bt. And this is rather clumsy, so we want to use a trade indicator, QT, uh, equal to plus 1 when there's a buy, negative when a sell. Then we can rewrite our PT as MT plus uh, QT times C. Do note that uh, we only have PT, so uh, we didn't know MT or QT, okay, we want to figure out C because that is what we estimate is the beta spread, which is 2C. And how do we proceed? The first thing to do is to notice MT's efficient price that follow random walk. And random walk, actually, when you took the first difference, which is MT minus, MT minus 1, to today's efficient price minus yesterday's efficient price is equal to the uh, mean zero IID random variable. So we can do that first. So use uh, random assumption. So take the delta PT, different, first different price is PT minus PT minus 1. Is we put the definition of PT and PT minus 1 into here, then we have uh, two bracket. And now what we do is collect the term with C and collect the term with delta C and note that MT minus MT minus 1, the last two terms, will be the UT. So now we know uh, delta PT is equal to this expression. So what we need is now to have some assumption on how QT, QT minus 1, and UT are related. The first thing we want to assume is QT, where the assumption is uh, buys and sell equal likely. So QT is equal likely to be equal to 1 or negative 1. What does that mean? This means that expected value of QT okay, is equal to 0. Okay, Expected value is equal to 1 times probability of equal to 1 and negative 1 times probability equal to negative 1, which is 0. And the second moment is expected value of qt squared is equal to 1. Okay, The calculation is straightforward. So the next assumption we have is to assume qt and qt minus 1, and we assume they're independent, Okay, which means if the current trace by, Telling you this is buy doesn't tell you anything, help you to predict where the next phase buy. Similarly, if this phase sell, or oh, doesn't tell you where the next phase sell. So this implies that uh, product of QT and QT minus 1 have expected value of 0. The reason is because uh, QT and QT minus 1 are both have mean 0, and if they're independent, uh, then it means that uh, the product of them are also zero. It comes from a basic uh, property you learn from statistics class. If they're independent and both are mean zero, the expected value of the pro product is equal to zero because covariance is zero uh, because they're independent. So, and you can rewrite covariance as uh, two terms. The first term is expected value of the product minus uh, product of their expectation and because of the second term is zero uh, also the first term is zero and the last assumption we're going to make is a trace independent of the random term ut so we use the same concept and we can say our uh, qt and ut the expected value is zero and qt minus one and ut are also zero now before we start uh, to show our declaration, we want to show you preview the result we want. So even if you lose uh, the math we are going to do, so you still know what we're doing. So we call the change of price is uh, 
delta pt is pt minus pt minus 1. So we know that uh, this is equal to this formula, pt is equal to qt minus qt minus 1 times t plus ut. So we will show that we are going to do in the next uh, 5 to 10 minutes or so. So we will show that um, the octal covariance, okay, which is the variance of the uh, first difference in price, is equal to 2 times c squared plus sigma squared u. Okay? And if you do the uh, first octal covariance, which is covariance of uh, delta pt and its lag, will be equal to negative c squared. Okay? And from that on, will be all zero. Okay? So, uh, that means we have uh, the c, which is beta spread, is equal to square root of negative gamma 1. And the uh, volatility, which is sigma squared u, is equal to gamma 0 plus 2 gamma 1. 